Hey, welcome to Jazz After Dark. How you doing out there? Good? Oh, it's crooked. Let's see if we can fix that a little bit. No? Eh, just going to be crooked tonight. How you doing? Good, good. I'll be uh, finishing up the Nog Knob Creek uh, Kentucky Rye tonight here. It is very late at night here in old Florida. We are financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth, and we call ourselves Jazz Wealth because our focus is on your wealth. And so I was thinking about this the other day. By the way, this is awesome. I've got this cool little cup that's got a little finger slot in there. Huh? Gotcha. <laughs> um, I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, what is wealth? Like, how do you define that? I see clients, we literally have thousands of clients all over the United States and Guam and Puerto Rico and that are stationed overseas and stuff. And I think, what, what does it mean? Like, there's no singular way to say that's well right there. Go there. Do that. No, not really. And so what spurred this on is, uh, if you don't know, I uh, I go meet clients on the weekends and stuff. And uh, 2024 is going to be a big year for that. I'm going to be going all over meeting clients and everything. And uh, I'll let you know where I'm at. We'll come hang out. We'll try to, you know, have a little get together or something. But I was thinking, there's no real way to do like a class that's like, that's wealth. You know, this is what you need to aspire for. Because we all have things that are different. And like I said, I was speaking to a client. I was in Georgia uh, last weekend. And they were describing wealth to me. And I was like, boring. You know, that has nothing to do with what I'm into as a human or as me, Dustin. And, but to them, it was really important. And they were almost like teary eyed about how life had tried to stop them from getting to these goals. And for them, it was a much different picture than what I'd ever accomplished or what I want to accomplish. And I thought, well, you know, that that's so interesting because to me, it sounds boring. To them, it's like, if they can't do it, then what are they here for? And so when I was talking to these clients, I'm like, how do you guys define wealth? You know, we, we don't have to rush. We're just sitting there. We're actually on their patio. And uh, we were just sitting there and I'm like, what? help me out. Like, how do I better understand that? Because I see wealth in the eyes of the individual based on how they're achieving their goals. And I think any financial advisor, planner or whatever, just they just want to help you get to their goals. So th there's nothing wrong with that. And when I was talking to the client, they were like, well, as we started making more, we noticed it got harder for us to uh, sort of maintain the savings that we had, right? And so this is kind of a rant here, by the way. And I thought, well, okay, well, let's talk about that. I'm like, did by chance, did you ever lose a little respect for one singular dollar? Did, did that happen? And they, they laughed. They, they were sort of, at this point, they had kind of gotten teary-eyed about some of the pains in their life. And they were like, you know, it's funny when you say that because we didn't necessarily buy fancier things. We just shopped at the stores that were closer. Our groceries became more expensive, right? And I say, you know, I noticed something years ago, uh, many years ago, I had my highest earning year ever. And it wasn't here at Jazz Wealth. I was uh, teaching Chinese investors how to invest. And part of my job was I had to invest in front of them. So this was all live and happening. And I had to show them that I was making money, therefore you could make money. And that sort of focus made me have a really great year. And so in that year, I lost respect for a dollar. I all of a sudden was like, can we get the toothpaste that whitens your teeth? Not the normal cheap stuff that we get. Is there really a difference? Like, who cares? <laughs> right. But I, I remember those things vividly. And they said, yeah, we, we kind of did lose a little. If, if we're being honest, we lost a little respect for the dollar. And so I was telling them, I'm like, you know, I think there's call it what you will. But I think there's something out there that says as soon as you earn more and you lose respect for the day-to-day -day dollar, those dollars aren't long for your life. Is, is that weird? Does, does that sound odd a little bit? And I was like, I've noticed over the years, because people tease me all the time. They're like, why do you drive the old truck? Like, that doesn't make sense. Go buy a Jaguar, go buy a, a Porsche or whatever. You can afford it, go buy it. And in my head, no matter what I do, the second something becomes unnecessary, 
I get really wishy-washy. And I'm like, oh, I can, maybe I should, maybe I won't. I'll analyze it to death. And inevitably, I'll do nothing. And I'll just keep going about my life. And I was like, I think that stems from like a fear of once you have it, you're afraid they're going to take it from you. Do you guys feel that? And it's a kind of a weird thing. Well, if you can manage to respect the individual dollar, it's almost like the deals come to you. And this is going to sound super silly. I was just joking with you a second ago about this glass, right? And I've done this before. I've seen your comments, right? I always joke that this glass has a little finger spot, you know, so that I can you know, drink out of the glass. I know exactly what this glass is for. I'm a bit of a cigar connoisseur. And this evening, I had come across this. And to me, this was the deal of a lifetime. And, and those of you that know, maybe this is nothing to you, but these are HVC or Havana City cigars. And I find these things to be the most fascinating things on the planet. And I've been kind of carrying them around. They're all jacked up and stuff. But I find these things to be awesome. And I spotted this in the back of an old cigar bar where the guys up front were literally rolling and doing all this stuff. I just find that interesting. And they're all dusty. You can see the efflorescence if you're a cigar person. You can see that on there, like they've been sitting for a long time. And my eye was drawn right to them. I'm like, I can't get these. I could order them online and stuff. It's just not the same. I can't grab them. They're, they're there. And I was, I was telling the guy, I'm like, I have to have it. I will take the whole box. And the de so what worked out being is he was like, I will give you the deal. I'll just I'll let you have it for what it costs us. You're here. I appreciate the business and all that. And he knows who I am. So it was kind of like a really cool experience. But if I didn't have respect for the day-to-day -day dollar, like the things I spend money on for lunch, or a funny one, there's a gas station in town I won't go to. I know for a fact they are the most expensive gas station on my route home, which is not a short drive. I know that they're the most expensive. I see it. I look at it every day and I go, that's too much, right? It would be very easy to just stop because it's on the right-hand side and therefore I can get in and out quickly and I don't have to wait at a light, but I won't do it. You know what I mean? And so these deals come across. To me, I find that fascinating. So think about wealth for yourself. Maybe you're into boats. I have a client that's in the Carolinas and they're really into sailboats. They don't want somebody to drive it for them. They want to drive the boat or they want to have their own boat and fix it and explore and do all of that. What is wealth to you? Because inevitably, when you go to work with an advisor, be it us or someone else you see online or someone locally in town, they're going to want to know your goals. And yeah, they'll say goals. But in reality, what we're asking is, what do you assign wealth to? We don't, not all of us need the private jets, you know, all the crappy stuff you see online. That's not the majority of us, right? For most of us, it would be like, dude, if I could have a TV outside and like hang out outside, what more do you want? You know, like, so everybody has a different layer there. For me, I have these interesting things that I like to bring to you guys. I like to share with you guys the way I like to go visit clients on the weekends. I fly my own plane. I don't want somebody to fly me around. I don't think that's interesting. I, that's like wasteful in my mind. But if I get to do it, and to me, it's an experience getting there as well as enjoying the time that I'm there. I just, I find that that's worth so much like in my head. So a bit of a rant here today, but I just kind of wanted to throw that by you. Like think of wealth differently. Don't, don't do the Instagram thing where you're like, oh man, wealth is like having 10 real estate properties and all that stuff. Maybe for some of you, right? But for me, wealth is is like this. Like I just think this is so cool. I have box one hundred and thirty three of five hundred of this. Oops, sorry, of this Blackbird Macaw cigar. I'll probably never touch them. This is as close to me as I'll ever have this. But I think that's super cool. Some of you will leave comments that this is ridiculous, and I guess I understand that now. I kind of get where you're coming from because. If your thing is a special baseball that was signed by your hometown hero, I think that's ridiculous. It doesn't mean you're wrong. 
That's how you assign wealth. If it's paying for college for your kids, or maybe you like a certain car. We have a client that's actually local. I think he's ridiculous for buying this. It is a Porsche, but it's a very nice car, but I think it's ridiculous. But he's happy. And because he has what's making him happy, he's not wasting money on other things that people that are not wealthy do to try to consistently make themselves feel good. Did I hit something on the head there a little bit? Hmm? Knob Creek Rye. That is very good. And it's almost done, actually. So we'll be moving on to something else. Anyways, just a little bit of a rant tonight. It just kind of struck me different. I don't know. There's something about talking to that client that's been ringing in my head throughout the week. And I'm like, you know, they may have it right. Maybe I just have little things. I'm so focused on work. Maybe I'm missing out on this. I don't know. Anyways, let me know what you think below. What is wealth to you? What does it mean? Don't be afraid to just share it, whatever it is. Maybe it's going to Burning Man once a year and that frees you and you're able to go back to your job that you hate or whatever. I don't know. I've heard it all. You can't like embarrass yourself in front of me, but let me know. What is wealth? Just curious. All right. See you guys later.